So I'm Adrienne Eberhardt. Uh, I am your dating and relationship coach. I'm coming to you live tonight with a video about how to transform a masculine, sorry, a feminine energy man into a masculine energy man. I get questions all the time from women about how, you know, a man expects me to chase him or pursue him or do all the work for the relationship. And I find myself being kind of thrown into my masculine energy as a woman. So tonight I'm going to tell you exactly some steps you can use to use your feminine energy to eclipse the man out of his feet and into his masculine energy, which is where you want him to be. So thank you so much for joining me tonight live. I'm so excited to see you all here in the comments section. And thank you for, you know, finding me over here on this channel. I had originally had a different, um, you know, a different address and just for some reason it was getting stuck. So we're all here together tonight. Yay. I'm so glad we're together. And thumbs up. Everybody can hear me okay. We're ready to get moving right along. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Perfect. So let's talk a little bit about how to transform a man who is in his feminine energy into his masculine energy. But first, let's do a little recap. Let's understand why we want to really eclipse this man or outgirl him. One of the first things you have to understand about, you know, men and masculine energy is that men compete with each other. They really compete to outdo one another. And, um, you know, it's no doubt that men will have these just ongoing battles with another man to see who is the most masculine or who's the alpha. Now, women can do a version of this. We might try to outsing another woman or outdress another woman or something like this. But with a man, it's kind of like always there. You know, it's always there. They And it just is who they are. And when you get into your masculine energy as a woman, and he is in his masculine energy, there becomes this tug of war. There is no more polarity. There is no more reason for excitement and allure and attraction because you two are now the same, you see. The other thing that happens is that he will dig his heels in. You are now a man, a masculine energy and a masculine energy one of you is going to lose and the man will just dig his heels in. So these are just ways that you don't want to get caught up in this. And feminine energy is a much more relaxed energy. And when you uh, meet a man in your feminine energy, when you meet his energy with your feminine energy and you are relaxed, you allow him time and space to open up to new possibilities. That's why if any of you have ever gotten an argument with your boyfriend and he's gotten his car and he's drove off for a little while, after a little while, he'll come back. He's a little different. You know, he's had a little time and he's had a little space from you. So, you know, ultimately it is up to us as a woman to choose how we will be treated and how we will live our lives. You set the standard for you. So let's get into this in deeper subject. A question or a comment rather that I get from a lot of people is we should not want to change ourselves. We should not want to change who you are and you should accept someone as they are. If a guy is a feminine energy man, you should just accept him the way he is. If you are a masculine energy woman, you should not try to change yourself for you know, to uh, make it work with a man or to please a man. That is not what I'm talking about. <laughs> and if you're having these sorts of thoughts, number one, you're an intelligent person. Uh, the secondly, that's just part of masculine mindset is that you're trapped in this world that if I have to change, if I have to do something different than the knee jerk reaction, than this intentional model that's inside of me, then I'm changing for someone. And that's very much masculine energy. So how often have you told your husband or your boyfriend how to do something better? And they're like, let me do it. Let me do it my way. That's masculine energy. Now you're getting this, right? You're getting why you might get so offended if someone tells you how to do things differently. 
So feminine energy is in you already. If you're a woman, so is masculine energy. We just need to activate it and wake it back up because you are born into a masculine energy world. The All of the women who have lived before you, your ancestors, your mother and your grandmother are the exception. They got to choose, possibly choose birth control methods. They got to vote. So think about how many generations of women who have lived before you who couldn't vote, um, didn't have the option of birth control, and didn't have legal rights. And their survival as a woman was on being nice to a man. So this has gotten into your DNA over all the years that if we're just nice, then everything should work out, right? And that's not how it works. So then we became, here comes the feminist movement, and we became ball busters. And we got really into our masculine energy. And we were like, you know, anything you can do, I can do better. And we now have this struggle with a man. And that doesn't work either. So this is not about changing who you are. And it is not about refusing a person the way they show up or not accepting a man the way he is. It is about doing what is going to work and get you back to a more natural way of speaking, being, and feeling. And for all of you in this group, you know, who are in this chat tonight, when you use some of the tools that I'm going to teach you tonight, I want you to tell me how you feel. Because when you get into your feminine energy, and you are no longer managing, thinking ahead, figuring it out for the man, calling him, pursuing him, making this relationship happen, setting the pacing, setting the tone, making the plans, doing all the action, you get to relax and be a girl. And the really, really cool thing that happens is you feel amazing. You feel amazing and people will see it in your forehead. You will not need Botox anymore. (laughs) you'll just relax naturally. You will look way younger. You will feel much better. Your panic attacks may stop. Your anxiety may subside. Bad habits will begin to go away because you're not living in an energy 24 seven. That's not good for you. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about why this works how you can activate a man into his feminine, uh, into his masculine energy and into his feminine energy as well. Uh, In communications, there's something called code switching. And code switching is really based on who you're around. It's kind of like when you're, you know, you're out with your girlfriends, you're talking one way, you're being sassy, and you're speaking one way. But when you go home to your grandma's house and you got all your family around, your Southern accent starts to come out like a whole lot more, y'all. And you start to talk a lot more like your family, right? And then when you're with your girlfriends or you speak another way, when you go to work, you talk another way. If there is someone in front of you that can't understand something, you begin to talk slower or more deliberately or, or you know, you try to enunciate your words, right? That's code switching. You are changing how you're talking to someone based on that other person around you. And that's what I'm going to teach you tonight, but I'm going to teach you how to do that with feminine energy. So a lot of times we code switch totally based on our senses. We get a sense about it. Um, And that is just something invisible that happens. And pay attention to that when you find yourself speaking to someone differently, totally based on senses. You just get a sense that, you know, an an elderly couple walks up to you and they need directions. You know, you're not going to talk to them like you're speaking to, say, your teenage son. It's going to be very different, but why not? There's no reason why you shouldn't, but there is a sense you get. You see how that's invisible? There is a sense you get that I need to speak to this person differently. All right, so this is the power of feminine energy. We have this knowledge, this ability to sense and feel. So am I getting through to y'all about how this works, the magic about all of this in code switching? Um, so 
when you switch out of that code or that energy of masculine energy and that masculine mindset, people around you will also change. They'll still be who they are, but they will change. It's the same when you go to your child and you have a very authoritative tone with your child. You're getting, you're speaking with command in your voice. Your child will sit up straight and they'll listen and their eyes will get big. That's because your energy has changed. Their energy has changed. Same with your, any man you meet. Same with your husband, your boyfriend, any male energy you're around, or even a woman who's really strong in her masculine energy. You know, like at work, this works. So when you switch out of your masculine energy, you will change that person. You will change them like this, that fast. So a few notes. Sweet, sensitive guys who adopt cats and save a baby bird they found in their backyard, <laughs> who want to learn how to make pasta. Sweet, sensitive men do not necessarily mean um, feminine energy. And just because a man is sweet and sensitive does not mean that he never calls you. You have to chase him down. He is floundering in his life. He's a mama's boy. He wants to cry all the time to you and tell you all his problems. When you start using a feeling statement, he starts using a bunch of feeling statements too. This doesn't mean he's necessarily in his feminine energy and he's not taking action and pursuing you. So a sensitive man is a very, you know, different type of thing. They can still be jerks. They can still cheat on you. They can still not call you. A sensitive man can do all of those things. We're talking about the difference between the sperm and the egg. The egg is feminine. It sits, it waits, it trusts. The sperm is out to find it, pursuing, um, you know, energy, lots of energy, action, pursuit. That is masculine energy. So when you are like this with your phone and you're going, why didn't he call me yet? Why haven't I heard from him yet? And you're like this, that's action. It's energy. Or where's my husband? He was supposed to text me. I'm supposed to stay on top of him. Like I'm a manager at work. That's in, that's masculine energy. So even if he's not around you, you can actually um, let him feel this energy by just putting your phone down and not pursuing him electronically. Am I telling you that even though he's not in front of you, that he's going to feel that your energy is not all over him? And the answer is yes, he will feel it. We have all thought of someone and missed someone and our phone rings and is that person calling us. We have all had these phenomenons happen in our lives where when we take our energy off of someone or we're having a lot of negative thoughts about something that happened at work or maybe you got in a fight with your mom or your sister or your friend or something like that and you are putting all this negative energy into it that when you decide to switch that up, different things begin to happen. You know, when you decide instead of like, oh, I'm just destined to be in debt the rest of my life. And you're like, you know what? I'm going to change. This is the year I do it. This is the month I do it. And then all of a sudden you get a refund check for $100 you didn't know was coming in the mail. So there is great power in simply shifting your outlook. And even if something doesn't happen, you begin to feel better. And when you begin to feel better, you open up that place of new opportunity that new opportunity that's inside of you. When you're stressed out in your masculine energy and making things happen, you cannot function from a healthy place of letting a relationship unfold in a very natural, beautiful way, okay? So feminine energy is receiving. It is low to no action. It is waiting a person out, waiting them out to see what they do. It's patience. It's letting it unfold, um, it's being relaxed and in your body and by in your body, I don't mean like, okay, I'm in my body. I'm in my body now. It's like, I'm in my body and I know what I'm feeling in my body. And you're aware of the emotions that you're having 
versus the thoughts you're thinking, which is masculine. And just because you think thoughts and you're intelligent doesn't mean you're constantly in masculine energy, but thoughts are usually, they're kind of more action oriented, whereas feelings are just, this is just how I feel. It's just how I feel. Okay. So um, a big one I get with a lot of clients is urgency. They have to know now, they have to, after three or four dates, know now, you know, what is happening in this relationship. What's he going to do? I need to know now. My ex just called me up two weeks ago, or my husband needs to tell me now if we're going to figure this out and let it unfold. Feminine energy is a relaxed, letting it unfold, trusting, trusting, trusting that everything is going to work out for you perfectly. If it's not with him, It is going to be something even better. And you can trust me on that. I have seen so many marriages, so many wonderful engagements from women who have come from things where they thought this was it. And I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I had a man walk out on me that I thought he was going to be my forever and everything. And all I was was love starved and so hungry. And I didn't know anything about loyalty. I didn't know that loyalty and is much more valuable than, you know, physical attraction or things like that. But often when you find that loyal person who treats you right and is good to you, all everything just falls into place. No rushing, no rushing. Okay. So ways men are feminine. I, I took a survey on my group. The biggest way I found that men were feminine was in planning They don't plan dates. They're not pursuing you to plan dates. They're not pursuing you to plan when y'all are going out to dinner. They're not pursuing you about when are we going to make love. They are not planning when to do the laundry. They are not planning when to pay that bill. They are not planning when you're going to, you know, measure for new carpet. They're just not doing the planning. Okay. And they get lazy. And they get lazy. And this is such a male characteristic because men are just incredibly smart. Again, they're way more intuitive than we give them credit for. They do what feels good. Let me repeat myself. Men do what feels good. If he's out in the backyard mowing the lawn, even though you can afford a gardener, he does it because it feels good. If he takes you you know, to get your mammogram (laughs) and sits in the waiting uh, area for you. He's doing it because some part of it feels good to him. He loves you and some part of it feels good to him. All right. So men do what feels good. Let's make that perfectly clear. They are not like us. They will not put their well-being to take care of another individual first, not in most cases, not unless it feels good. Whereas we will have a baby, we'll have something helpless in our hands and we will do whatever it takes to make sure that that survives. Men, not as much. They can and they will and they do, but we do it. I start talking about it. I start tearing up. Get a man to talk about it. He's like, oh, sounds like a lot of commitment, a lot of work to take care of something littler than me. So are are y'all feeling me here with why they're why they're different? We just need to accept this. So they get lazy about planning because at some point in that planning of your date or going out to dinner, whether it's making love, taking out the grass, whatever it is, taking out the trash. Whatever it is, they stopped getting a reward that feels good. Now, do you need to walk around rewarding your guy for everything? You're so awesome. You're so great. No, this is about how you feel in your body. This is about how you feel in your body. And that is I feel or I'm feeling. And when you talk about I feel and what you feel in your body, this isn't like I feel like this when you did that. It's not that way. It's not blaming that person. You're making me feel. It's not blame. And in fact, one of the best things I suggest you do is take out you from your sentences. And it makes it really, you know, kind of new and different to learn how to speak to a man. You just take out the the word you. 
but you want to feel in your body and find what you feel as an essence, as a sensation that you're having in your body and speak it. I feel or I'm feeling. So a couple of things that came up in the group. Oh, thank you, uh, China, for your uh, donation. That's very sweet. Thank you. Um, one of the things is that we can do it better faster. And I don't doubt this. You can probably do so many things better and faster than your guy. I get in the car with my guy and we're going to the grocery store and he starts driving me this whole new way that we never go. And I have to bite my tongue to say, didn't you mean to turn here? Don't you mean to go there? I have to let him do it his way. And then he says, oh, you know, I wanted to drive you past here because the trees, the leaves were changing. I drove past this street on my bicycle and I have something new that I otherwise wouldn't have. And that is the beautiful surprise that you get by being in your feminine energy and by letting this unfold. There's always this gift that you get by letting the man lead and and. You know, if he needs your help, if you think he needs your help, you can say, you know, I feel so happy that you're doing this. Will you let me know if there's anything I can do? You know, I feel so happy to have that this extra help. Will you let me know if there's anything I can do? It's that easy. So we can do it better, faster. Yes, you can, probably in most cases. But in order for that man to get into his masculine energy and feel like a man and not like a little baby in your arms, you have to let him do it. And you've, you've experienced this with your children, raising children. There's a moment where you have to let them do it. And stop micromanaging and over-functioning in your relationships and doing everything for the guy. Uh, when it comes to dating, going on dates, planning dates, planning dinners, where you guys are going to eat at, things like this. Once in a while, uh, you know, if you're in a really good regular dating relationship with a man, once in a while, if there's something you want to specifically do, like, you know, early on with my husband, Jeff, there's a really fancy restaurant I wanted to go to. And I let him know like, oh, I'm so excited to go here. They're having this special pairing and... Uh, it would feel so great to go. What do you think? He said, yes. And when the bill came, he went to pay for it. But I said, no, no, I want to do this. I want to pay for this because this was my idea. This is what I wanted to do. And you see how that's a very different type of thing. It's something that he'll appreciate that you are able to do this. It's not some rigid rule. I never do anything for you. You do all the heavy lifting. You do all the planning. I am capable of doing that once in a while. But for the most part, you want the man to do the planning of the dates. You can let him know how a place will feel to you. Like, oh, I like it when it feels kind of cozy inside. Maybe someplace with a nice fire or, or music or not too loud, something like that. Now, if this sounds good to you. I actually have a uh, something called a VIP library, and it comes with all my programs, not my ebook, but it comes with my programs. And I have how to write your dating profile and even include date ideas in your dating profile. That comes with like, you know, ABCs to get him. It comes with a new man manifesto and my my program I did with Helena Hart. So you learn how to speak to a man so he hears you. And you do that by sharing what is in your body. Now, if a man is not calling you, and he's not calling you to make dates with you, ladies, go check out Fem Tools. Fem Tools or New Man Manifesto. I teach you so much about dating in that. But if he doesn't pursue you early on in dating, or if he says, I notice you don't call me, like other women do, or you don't pursue me like other women do, you can let him know, you know, well, I'm, I'm excited. I feel excited that, you know, you want us to talk and get together because that's ultimately what he's saying. Um, yet I feel strange pursuing a man. Yet I don't feel like a girl pursuing a man. I just don't. But again, if you're having regular dating and it feels really good, 
every once in a while, you can reach out to him first and use a feeling statement. All right, so I hope these tips have been helpful. Um, one person had also added, my guy needs constant reassurance. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that one because I had a situation where that happened with a client. And I want to take a couple of questions. However, I want your questions to definitely be about, you know, a man that's in his feminine energy and something where he's not taking the action so I can help you turn it around. And make sure you use a question mark so I can identify it as a question, okay? So a man who needs a lot of reassurance or needs to know that you two are okay or he wants to, um, I had a client not too long ago said I have a man and he said that he wants me to be crazy about him. And she was absolutely crazy about him, but crazy is, is exactly that. It's crazy. And, um, you know, there's being attracted to someone, there's being loyal, there's being committed, there's being warm, there's being affectionate, and then there's being crazy about you. And the really great thing about feminine energy is it allows you to, you know, unzip your heart and share what's inside of it and connect on a different level. So if a man's needing a lot of reassurance, you can just tell him like, you know, I, I, I feel like, or I notice this keeps coming up and I feel warm and I feel connected, you know, when we're together. And is there something else that, you know, we're, we're needing to do, or is there something else going on that we need to do together to feel warm and connected or whatever it is? Sometimes it's just some crazy ego at work. All right. So let me get to a couple of questions here. Um, how do you initiate contact by using a feeling statement? So purple fantasy, um, this is something I talk about in the ABCs to get him back. Uh, even if you don't want a guy back, you know, if you're kind of ready to move on, um, there's something I teach in that called the Hail Mary. And I teach you how to date and I teach you lots of feminine energy tools. It's still a fantastic program to get. So one of the things I talk about is initiating with a feeling statement using the Hail Mary pass. Now, I'm going to tell you all about the Hail Mary. It's not, you know, a secret or anything. But the, the key here is, is the work you do before you initiate to that man. That is the big thing because you only do a Hail Mary once. You only do it once. Um, after that, it just becomes just as good as pursuit or stalking him or anything else. So what you would say is, I, I love this one personally, I miss connecting with you. I miss you. And it would feel really good to get coffee sometime. What do you think? It's that easy. There isn't a man alive that wouldn't like to hear, I miss you. And I miss connecting with you. You don't have to go, oh, I miss all our talks about this and when we did that and this other thing. And let me keep reminding you why we should have never broken up. Just, I miss you. I miss connecting with you. It feel wonderful to get a coffee together sometime. What do you think? Okay. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to find questions. Okay. So let me go back here. Um. Okay, um, Christy said, is it okay to maybe ask him to help plan for a trip that he booked and, or, and just kind of pretend to drop hints? You definitely don't want to kind of pretend to drop hints because that's passive aggressive. Um, if he booked the trip, if he booked it, I would leave planning up to him. But you could say to him, because you are looking out for your well-being, you are, you are wanting your life to be a certain way, right? You can say, you know, I feel really excited about our upcoming trip. Um, I'm curious, what do we have planned? I, you know, I want to pack and I want to know what to bring. And I'm curious, what do we have planned? And he goes, well, I don't have anything planned yet. Say, oh, you know, we're going to you know, Florida, I feel, I would feel really excited to do something like snorkeling. What do you think? You know, that's how you look out for yourself. Okay. Um, my man is sweet. tea says my man is used to being babied by his mom. He asked me to buy him stuff. How do I tell him I'm not his sugar mama? Um, I mean, you just, you really just say that like, 
don't have to bring up his mom because he will get mad about that. Don't talk about nobody's mama. But, <laughs> you know, you can tell him like, you know, I feel I feel a little whatever do you feel being asked to buy you things. And let's say you make a lot more money than him. And you can even tell him, you know, it's like, you know, like once in a while, it feels really good to me to do something. But, you know, being asked to do these things, I feel blank. And, you know, again, a man is going to treat you however you let him. But just let him know and then say no. No. You know, if, if something's urgent, if something's truly needed, I get it. But... I buy you gifts and things like that on my term. And I feel really strange being asked to do that. And it would feel so wonderful to just go stroll a park or cook a nice meal together. You know, something that doesn't cost money. What do you think? Okay, so moving on. Um, if you're newly... Uh, H. Jane said, if you're newly dating a man, say two to three dates, and you notice they are not really in their masculine, how long should you wait for this to show up? Well, here's the thing. He might be a sensitive guy, but the more you're in your feminine energy, this is how you eclipse a man in his feminine energy. This is how you outgirl him. You win the battle by going totally girl. If you stay in your masculine energy, there's going to be a competition, or you're going to keep you know, him and his feminine energy. So if you're going on two or three dates with him and, you know, he's not in his masculine, is he, you know, what, what is he doing? Because he might just have attributes that just aren't attracted to you. But the more you're in your feminine, the more you sit back and receive and you observe and you let it unfold, um, this is the more the man can become masculine. Now, one of the things I really recommend is dating a man um, really until you're not attract, if you're not attracted to him, if you don't want to kiss him by like third or fourth date and you're not feeling a strong attraction, that's when you just want to move on. Okay. Britt says, what can we do if he lets me do all the parenting? He lets you do all of the parenting. Notice that wording and take care of all the housework. And he says he'll help, but blows it off. So I'm so glad that you brought up um, chores and things like that, because this is something I talk about in my ebook, 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. I talk about things like, you know, not paying, uh, you know, not paying for bills, not paying for things that he is, uh, you know, said he would and things like that. And, and the thing that you really want to do is you want to be able to, in some way, come to him in your masculine energy and sit down with him and say, you know, I, I'm feel here's what I'm feeling. And, you know, I don't want us to, you know, bicker or argue about this, but I'm feeling this. So at the end of the day, any person in the family who isn't bringing something to the table, there will begin to be some animosity or disrespect. It's going to happen. So if you're feeling like things are out of whack, that the balance isn't right in the house, you need to be able to come to him and tell him this. Now, let me make this perfectly clear. When you go to a man like this, you want the resolution to be his idea. And you want to say to him, like, here's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling really overwhelmed with the kids and the housework. And what should we do? And he says, well, here's what we should do. I'll tell you that I will help on Thursday. So when Thursday rolls around and he doesn't help, you got to wait him out. You got to let the laundry pile up. You got to let the dishes pile up. And you can't go to him and say, look at all this mess. I thought you told me you were going to help. Just be like, yeah. He go, wow, the kitchen's a mess. And go, yeah, yeah. Just let it keep piling up until he says something. This is how you break this. You break it and you break it for good. But you have to remain in a place of warmth. <laughs> how do you do that when dishes are piling up? You know, how do, how can you do this? There's a part of you that has to absolutely believe and trust that the man that you chose the partner that you have in your life ultimately wants to do good for you and his family. Believe and trust in that. 
And if they pile up too much, you come to him and say, hey, you know, I've noticed that the dishes are really piling up. It would feel so good to get everything clean and looking good. What do you think we should do? And come to him and let him do the problem solving with that. So I hope that helped you out a little bit. There's only so much I can do over a YouTube video Q&A, but I do hope that that helped you out. Um, this is a great question that I really like to get this one. Two questions. Do I wait him out when he doesn't confirm the date until day of? And what do you do if he wants to go 50-50 on a date? I talk about both of these in 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. It's an ebook. It's on my website. Go check it out. It comes with a video class. Um, when a man asks you out on a date, you can tell him, oh, I feel so excited to be going out this weekend. Um, you know, it feels really good to confirm, you know, when we're going to be going out. You can either say, what day or time were you thinking? He says Friday at three o'clock and it's Tuesday. And you'll, you can say to him, you know, I always feel a little anxious before a date and it would feel really good to confirm. What do you think? And he goes, yeah, 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 go ahead and confirm. So he's telling you to confirm. So you confirm with him, but you're making it his idea, you see? Or you can say, you know, it feels really good to confirm before the date and just make sure we're still on the same page. Like maybe the day before, what do you think? He goes, yeah, yeah, the day before, that'll be good. We can confirm the, before the day. And if it's Thursday at 1045 and he hasn't confirmed with you, that means he has delegated it to you. So Vanessa, first thing you do when he sets the date, what day and time are you thinking? And be sure to get like fem tools or 500 ways to talk to a man. It'll really help you with that. Next one. Uh, what do you think of men who want to go 50, 50 financially? I don't feel comfortable with it. Don't take your wallet out on a date with you. Um, for me, my opinion, I believe a man has to show us that he wants to invest with us in, in me as a person. And, um, you know, dates do not need to be expensive. They can be a $5 cup of coffee. They can be a walk in a park and an ice cream cone. They can be strolling some shops and stores and stopping and having, sharing, you know, a pint of beer. There are so many wonderful ways to have inexpensive dates. If a man says, hey, let's meet at this really nice restaurant. And then he says, by the way, let's split the check 50-50. Go, oh my goodness, I, I, I feel so confused. Are we on a date? And he goes, yes, but to be fair, in this day and age, we should split things 50-50. Oh my goodness, that just doesn't, that doesn't feel romantic to me. I, you know, I totally get in this day and age things are going on, but that just doesn't feel romantic to me. And sit there and, and just look. Time and space. Time, space, zip it. Let him figure it out. You see, as long as we're chattering and we're talking and explaining, a guy cannot process anything. <laughs> he can't. So your silence is key to getting a man to open up. All right. So last question here. Um, what, do you, what do you do with a man in his wounded feminine who says, seems like you're too busy to talk when you don't text back within the hour? Um, you call him. If you have time, uh, you reach right out to him and say, oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. You must be feeling, um, seems like you're too busy to talk. Uh, you must be feeling really neglected. What's, I'm curious what's going on. So this is a technique called really, really get him. This is a great thing to practice on men. If a guy's going to play a little game like with, with, with you with this, I want you to go along with it for just a minute. Not that you're playing a game with him, but you're going to take him serious. If he's a drama queen in disguise, you need to find out now. You don't want to find out after the first year of marriage, right? Oh my goodness, you must be feeling so neglected. Hi, how's it going? And he goes, yeah, I am. Why don't you text me back within an hour? Uh-huh. Now we're getting to it. Oh my goodness, because... You know, I, I feel so flattered that you want me to write you back immediately. And I've been having a wonderful day. Like, 
You know, I've been working, I've been doing my laundry, organizing my closet, whatever I've been doing. You're keeping it positive and warm instead of taking offense to it. So really, really get him is about meeting him where he's at. You kind of imagine the look on his face when he sends you this message. And you say, wow, you must be feeling really blank. Okay. So when a man comes back to you with something like that, you can just let him know without explaining, without defending. Oh, I'm having this, you know, rich, wonderful life. You're not being snide. And that's a hump that you get over. You know, this could be the first time in this man's life ever that he has ever had a woman be so straightforward and honest with him. He might have been raised by the most narcissistic mom and a dad that was so hot and cold. He doesn't even know what love is. He doesn't even know how to express it or communicate. So this is how your feminine energy, your honesty and your warmth can actually heal a man. All right. <laughs> That's a tough one. Okay, you guys, I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, I will just scroll down and take one last question. Uh, Design Life says, what do you do if your man sees you over-functioning as an independent single mom and then seems to feel he can just lean back from his previous masculine into his feminine and not step up? What can I say about that? That's a man being a man. That's a man doing what feels good to him. Look, if you're going to be large and in charge and take care of everything, he will watch the ball game on the couch and not do anything. You see? So there's a part of you that you really need to, you know, communicate and let a person know how you feel. Not like, I feel like you're doing this. I feel in my body. I feel in my body. Here's what's going on with me. Oh my gosh, I feel so exhausted. Oh my goodness. You know, I, I don't want to tell you what to do. It would feel so wonderful if I could get some help. What do you think? That's how you do it. All right. But as long as you're over-functioning and he sees you doing that, he's not going to come in. All right, so Gina C., your question caught my eye. I was wondering why men deserve all this freaking credit when women don't. It's catered to the man, blah, 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 and it kind of pisses me off. Honey, you're reading this all wrong. You're reading it all wrong. I am waking you up. I am waking up your feminine energy. We are not doing this for any man. We are doing it for you, woman. We want you to feel good. We want you to feel relaxed. Remember, you choose the type of life you want to have. You choose how you want to be treated. If what you're doing isn't working because you're possibly in your masculine energy, that's why you've maybe been drawn to this video. If what you're doing isn't working, you got three options. You can slam the door in his face, leave, break up, the end. You can keep doing the things the way you've been doing them. Or you can try something new. This is trying something new. This is a way to go inside that heart of yours, that red, beautiful, precious, wonderful, red beating heart you have and find what you feel. And instead of your inner voice, you know, going, all right, come here. Why are you doing this? You know, your inner boy wants to scrap with him. Your inner boy wants to kick that guy's butt. Inner girl, she feels like crying. She feels like crying and she feels totally over, you know, worked and tired and over functioning. And so you let that person know how you feel in your body about you. All right. It's not for the man. It's for you. The side effect, it makes you have a great relationship with a guy. It builds loyalty. It builds trust. It balances that polarity masculine energy over here, feminine energy over here, great attraction, good working together, strengths and strengths for each of you. And you come together. All right. Everybody much love to you. Thank you so much for joining tonight. To those of you who haven't checked out my ebook yet, it's 500 ways to talk to a man. It's over on my website. If you're in a situation where you want to get a guy back, you want to have the absolute best chances to get him back. 
I have a program called the ABCs to get him. And even if you're kind of like, I don't know if I want him back, I'm going to teach you how to date and a lot of other valuable uh, things in that program. I also have Femme for marriage and relationships, and I have Femme for dating. And Helena Hart and I have a great set of programs over on my website, too, that teach you a whole load of stuff, so many good things, to just study on your own, at your computer, on your phone, learn at your own pace. Um, waking up to feminine energy is, is, is something I still work at every day. Even though I am a coach and I do this for a living, every day I have to, um, you know, make sure my inner boy isn't just running the show, you know, and, and doing everything for everyone because I have a very strong inner boy. I just do. And I bet all of y'all do too. And uh, you have to learn how to listen to your body, find out what you're feeling, take care of yourself, nurture yourself, nurture your inner girl. And hopefully, you know, you start to feel so good. You begin to radiate this amazing energy around you. Men everywhere will notice and they will be drawn to you because you know, you're in your feminine now, they're in their masculine. So that is how you get a guy into his masculine. This is how you eclipse him with your feminine energy. Stop letting him be the girl. If he's behaving like a girl, you got to behave like more of a girl. You got to be even more of a girl than he is being. And for those of you who have guys that, um, you know, cry a lot, tell you their feelings a lot, go on and on and on talking, talking, talking about feelings and stuff. You got to put a time limit on that because it doesn't feel good. You see, it doesn't feel good. You got to say, you know, I, I hear you. You must be feeling this yet. I'm at my limit. I can't, I can't hear about this anymore tonight. I want to be there for you, but I'm just kind of at my limit, babe. He'll understand. He'll get it. Because let me tell you what, there have been times you've been talking to him and he's like, I cannot hear this another minute. <laughs> all right. Okay, everybody. Much love. Thank you all, you beautiful women, for tuning in tonight. And uh, I hope to see y'all over at I Heart Love Academy, my free, my free group over on uh, Facebook. Much love, everybody. Bye-bye. I'll look out for your questions in the comment section, too.